Excellent! So what's going to happen to CPU prices when AMD's Ryzen launches? This video is speculative. I'm going to be discussing that very question. It's one that I'm sure many of you have asked as well. I'm going to talk about what we know so far, what we're expecting soon with a fair degree of certainty, and what I think the perfect launch would be for consumers as well as AMD when it comes to their Ryzen CPUs and their pricing. First, let's go over the facts. On the Intel side, they just launched Kaby Lake at the beginning of January, and they've continued their somewhat boring and predictable trend in their mainstream CPU lineup. The processors are still, still limited to 4 cores and 8 threads max. Overclocking is still limited to just a few unlocked k skew CPUs that tend to feel overpriced. And going beyond 4 physical cores with Intel means you have to upgrade to their enthusiast platform, where you'll usually find more expensive X99 motherboards and much more expensive Broadwell E CPUs. On the AMD side, they have had a lot to talk about lately. Their new Zen CPU architecture will be integrated into a line of CPUs called Ryzen, with one chip codenamed Summit Ridge that has been detailed more specifically and shown off in a few demos. The Summit Ridge CPU has 8 physical cores and 16 threads via simultaneous multi-threading, which is akin to Intel's hyper-threading. It has 24 PCI Express Gen 3 lanes, and AMD has confirmed that all Ryzen class CPUs will have a base clock of at least 3.4 GHz, with some leaked demos showing the chip running at 3.9 GHz turbo. AMD's demos have been telling us repeatedly that the instructions per clock performance that they're seeing is in line with Intel's Broadwell E CPUs, which is very nice if true. Ryzen CPUs will launch in the first quarter of 2017, and there will most likely be other CPU versions in the family as well, probably with fewer physical cores and possibly also with multi-threading turned off. So before we move on, let me remind you that the last time AMD was beating Intel with a faster CPU was about 11 to 12 years ago with AMD's original FX series in 2005-2006. The last time their CPUs were competitive with Intel on an instructions per clock level was about 6 years ago before Sandy Bridge launched. Beyond that, they've stayed in the game with aggressive pricing and some innovations on the APU side, but the industry is beyond ready for them to kick Intel in the pants with some real refreshed competition. Now for the speculation part of this video, and I'm going to assume a few things based on promises that have been made and launch date ranges that have been set. We can assume, for example, that Intel is just waiting for AMD to launch Ryzen until they make a move with pricing, because Intel's pricing simply has not changed. On this chart, I've laid out sort of a recent history of Intel's CPUs, going back to about 2011. Uh, these are the mainstream CPUs, and then I have launch pricing here also listed. This information is all taken from uh, CPUworld.com, and I'm using the OEM pricing. Unlocked quad cores, you might notice, cost between $200 to $250, uh, depending on which one that you're getting, of course, and the price has increased a little bit so if you go back to Sandy Bridge. Uh, it costs about 300 to $350 for the unlocked quad core with hyper threading and again the price has gone up since 2011. Pricing increased from Sandy Bridge to Ivy Bridge but increased even more uh, if you look at Ivy Bridge to Haswell and it's kind of leveled off since then. You also might notice though that their overall production cycle has slowed down. This came out in January 2011, the original Sandy Bridge chips, and they were supposed to basically keep up with a yearly launch on the mainstream side. This was based on their old TikTok production cycle. Haswell Refresh was the first extra CPU line that was added right here in June 2014. That was neither a tick nor a talk, and Intel has now formalized process architecture optimization as their cycle instead of TikTok. Uh, and there's more on that in my first five things you need to know about KB Lake video. I'll put a card right up there in the corner if you guys want to check that out. KB Lake is now also an optimization cycle rather than a tick or a talk, and it definitely shows in the complete lack of instructions per clock performance improvement compared to Skylake as seen in my KB Lake benchmarks video, and I'll post a card to link that up in the corner as well. All this is to say that it's obvious that Intel has both slowed down their development cycle and raised their prices in the last six years. If TikTok had kept up the yearly pace after Sandy Bridge launched back in 2011, well, we would have seen Jan uh, Cannon Lake launch in January 2016, a full year ago. When does Cannon Lake launch again? Anyway, here's my chart that I had a lot of fun with. I am basically speculating on what versions of Ryzen AMD might launch, 
and what their core counts and thread counts might be. Now bear in mind, all of the CPUs that I'm listing here as TBD, I'm making up. I have no reason to believe any of these actually exist. I have no confirmed information. The only thing we have really confirmed is Summit Ridge and the stuff I discussed at the beginning of the video that AMD has said, yes, this will happen. Uh, we are told, of course, that the CPUs will have 24 PCIe lanes and that they'll all ship at 3.4 gigahertz clock speed at minimum with automatic overclocking based on your cooling setup as well. So I assume that the core count and thread count will be the main major differentiating factors in pricing and performance between Ryzen CPU SKUs. I'm also assuming that Ryzen per clock performance will be equal to Broadwell E and a bit slower than KB Lake. So I have Intel's KB Lake Unlock CPUs listed, including the dual core 7350K right over here, as well as a couple of their Broadwell E's uh, CPUs from the Enthusiast platform. So starting from the bottom, we have a four core, four thread Ryzen CPU for just $125. This might be wishful thinking, but just look how terrible it would make the 7350K look, actually four cores rather than two with hyper threading and a perfectly attainable budget chip in the low $100 range. I would happily recommend entry-level builds based on something like this. Next is the multi-threaded version of the quad-core at $175, walking all over the 7350K and probably smacking the 7600K around two, which would be in the tier above it, uh, at least in multi-threaded workloads and games. It would also be sitting down here at the $175 price point, looking up there at the 7700K, waving high, being like, hey, why does it need to cost so much money for having four cores and eight threads? At $225, we have a six core, six thread Ryzen chip, which would hopefully still outperform the four core, eight thread uh, version that's $50 cheaper, while also beating the 7600K. And again, pointing at the uh, six core Intel 6800K that's up here at $434, and wondering why it costs so much money, like twice as much, uh, and, and why the 6800K just has such expensive tastes. A six core 12 thread Ryzen CPU should then be able to take out the 7700K, uh, at least with apps that use all those threads, and also set the entry fee for higher end workstations about a hundred bucks cheaper than what the Intel Enthusiast platform currently costs, which is what you have to buy into if you want six cores. Finally, for the full Summit Ridge experience, uh, I have an eight core 16 thread chip at $500 and then another one at $650. Uh, and I'd assume they'd maybe do some bidding for the more expensive part to guarantee higher clock speed or something like that. Now, 500 plus dollars is a lot for a CPU. I mean, I'm not, not kidding around here, but remember that these CPUs should be able to compete with Intel's thousand dollar Broadwell E processors. And AMD does need to have some flagship level products to reestablish themselves as a high-end manufacturer and to earn some money again if they want to keep up with Intel in the coming years. And finally, here's my third little chart, uh, which is based on the wishful thinking of the chart I just showed you and potential AMD launches and pricing, what I think the reduction in price in Intel CPUs would be across the board. And basically you're looking at about 50 to $100, uh, 100-ish dollars for the high-end ones and more like a $50 reduction down at the lower end. Like the 7350K, costing 130 bucks which seems like what it should cost, not 180 bucks. Wouldn't that be nice? Now, I think Intel would still be touting their uh, IPC lead over Ryzen because that does seem like it will be the case when it launches, at least with something like KB Lake CPUs, for example. Uh, they would still price them maybe just a little bit higher than the AMD chips. Uh, but I'm also not sure where this would leave Intel's 8-core 6900K or 10-core 6950X, which cost $1,100 and $1,700 respectively, but I have to imagine those prices would drop as well. But it would be nice to be able to get, for example, 7350K for 130, 7600K for actually 200 bucks, 7700K for 275, that'd be a nice discount. Uh, I7 6800K around 375 and 6850K around 525. And I can't imagine the uh, eight core and 10 core processors costing too much more. It would be at least nice to see the 6950X come down to actually $1,000 rather than $1,700. Now again, guys, this is primarily speculation apart from the facts listed towards the beginning of this video, so none of this might actually happen. AMD might price their parts way higher and nothing might change price-wise on the Intel side, or we might find out that we've been totally duped by the early leaks and demos and the Ryzen performance just isn't there and it's not competitive. I find that to be unlikely. We might even see Ryzen chips be less expensive than, than what I'm speculating here. There have been rumors to that effect that like the, the Summit Ridge might cost less or the same price as what a 7700K currently costs. But I find that to be less likely because it would really gut the PCU mar uh, the CPU market and you know the companies do have to make some profit. 
I think what I've shown here is pretty feasible though, and it is a big reason why I've been recommending that people wait for now if you're about to build a new system, at least until February and March roll around. And if you're really patient, Intel's enthusiast platform is usually refreshed every three years, and X99 launched in 2014. 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017. So. If Ryzen does hit hard out of the gate, there is an answer from Intel possibly on the horizon when X299 launches, probably later this year. That's all for this video though, guys. Thank you so much for watching and let me know if speculative videos like this one are useful for you at all. Of course, hit the like button, comment, subscribe down below. Check out the description for links to my store as well as some other useful links from some of the research that I did for this video. Thanks again and we'll see you next time.